All right. So what you're seeing here is the CADRIC structure interface. We do have the CADRIC structure ribbon that's available. We have the model, modify, drawings, build materials, and the project panels. Um, we'll go ahead and select the setup icon in this project panel to open up the setup for the project. Uh, what you see here in the general tab is we have the configuration file, which this will be the configuration file for the, the, the project that you can set. This would be similar to plants if any plant users out there know the are familiar with the config files. Uh, also, we have the project file. Now, the project file is going to hold all of the member sizes that you want to use for that project. Um, and in this project file, you'll have the libraries. Currently, right now, I only have one library in this uh, project file, so that's the one we'll be using. Uh, we have the unit set. Right here, you see English change, but we do have metric available as well. And then we also have some rules in here. Uh, we got some mitering and coping. Um, you'll see here we got the bolted coping and welded coping checked, and we got some gap distances filled in. We're going to leave those checked for now. We're going to leave the auto cope unchecked, and we'll come back to that. Uh, a couple of the other rules that we'll be looking at, like the bracing, we will uh, look at that once we get into the bracing panel. So we'll go ahead and apply and close this. Now, the first thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and place a column grid. So in the model panel, we have this column grid icon. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. When it opens up, you'll see we've got the grid spacing. You'll see the modified spacing got vertical lines and horizontal lines. We'll go ahead and set that to the vertical lines. And we'll go ahead and click on this green plus sign here to add two column rows. The reason why I'm adding two is uh, the first row that pops in is the A label. That's uh, the column to column distance. If we key in a dimension here, that's going to be the distance from the insertion point to the first column line. So we want to leave that set to zero. We can go ahead and key in a dimension here for column B. That'll be the column distance from A to B. Let's go ahead and add another row here. We'll key in another distance. And we'll add a fourth row. Uh, so now we've got all our column to column spacing. So a to B is going to be 10 feet, B to C will be 15, and C to D will be 15 as well. I'll go ahead and switch this to the horizontal lines. We'll add two rows as well, and we'll key in a distance in this one. And then we got our column line set. A little farther down in the palette, we got our labels. So go ahead and select that, and you can see that we got the column lines. Here will be the extension length. That'll be extension length paths, the, out, the first and last rows. Um, we got our groups and layers. I'm going to go ahead and set the group to grid. So we have a default grid line set to the grid group, so that'll automatically pop in place. Next, we have a column bubble. The bubble shape, we can use circle, hexagon, square. We'll go ahead and leave the set to circle. And you can set the bubble size. If you want to make that larger or smaller, you can do that. Go ahead and set our group to grid as well. But this time, we want to change our layer to grid bubbles. A little lower, we have the label position. This is going to be the top, left, right, and bottom. Out of the box, you're going to, all these will be active, so you're going to get labels all on, on each side of your grid. You can turn a couple of these off if you want. Uh, they'll be gray if they're deactivated, but we're just going to leave those all on. The place by options, we have three options. We have point. So what this will do is the lower left corner of your grid, wherever you pick in the model, is going to place that grid. The boundary option, this is if you have like an L-shaped or Z-shaped pipe rack. It, you can draw that boundary of that rack. When you select the boundary, it'll place that grid inside that shape, but the extension lines will only go to the, set, the, the setting that you have uh, outside that boundary. We can go ahead and select the coordinates option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and key a coordinate in here. This will be the coordinate that I want my grid to be inserted at. Once we got those in, we'll go ahead and hit insert. Now at insert, you can't see it, so we'll just go ahead and change my view to pull that into place. And there's our column grid ready to go. Next thing we want to do is we want to place some columns on this grid. So up in the model panel, I'm going to go ahead and select the shapes icon up here. When the shapes icon opens up, we'll have the section type. We have the wide flange channels, angles, T-shapes. Now, many many shape types to choose from. We want to select the wide flange. We want to set a member size at W8 by 67. Now I can scroll through here to find the size I want, but some of your lists can be long. You can go ahead and actually key in a size that you want to use. It'll zoom right to it for you. It makes it a little quicker to, to navigate. Set our angle to 90 degrees. We want to set our cardinal point to the center center. So my insertion line of this column will be at the center center of this column. Go ahead and set our group to columns. We've got some place by options here. I'm going to go ahead and use this column length. We could use pick points where you can pick two points, specify a length, or if you have some lines drawn, you can select those lines. But we want to try this column length one because this is the new feature. Once we get that set, we'll go ahead and insert. And what it's asking you to do is going to ask you to enter that column length. So we want a 20-foot column. So I'll go ahead and key in 20 feet, hit enter. And now all I have to do is just go ahead and just pick my points where I want to place these columns. And you can continually place all these members without having to hit insert each time you place a member. So now we've got our column set. Let's go ahead and place some beams on these columns. Go in here and we'll just set the uh, member size to W10 by 22. Change the rotation back to 0 to our beams rotated. We'll change our cardinal point to the top center. So that's where we want our cardinal point to be on our beams. Set our group to beams. This time we'll go ahead and select pick point. So when I go ahead and hit insert, 
See, we got a snap issue. We always have to snap. It. It'll snap to any point on this member that we want, which can be confusing. You have to zoom really far to make sure you get to that center point. But what we've added here is this icon up here in the model panel called Snap to Cardinal Point. Now, when this is selected, it'll highlight in blue. So now when I hit Insert, I can come in, and it's only going to snap to that cardinal line of that member. So we can go ahead and easy, quickly place members at all these columns without having to worry about uh, snapping to the wrong portion of that, at that member. A little too quick. I'm not snapping in the right spot, but get those in there. So now we got those in place. Let's go and we want to place some members at a lower elevation. So let's go ahead and set this to the beam elevation option. Now when I hit insert, it's going to ask you to key in the elevation. So since my grid is at 25 feet, I want to go ahead and set my uh, next elevation at 32 foot six. So now what it's asking me to do is go ahead and select my columns. So I just go down the line. I select the columns that I want to connect with beams. And I right click it, it places all those columns in place, all those beams in place in between the columns that I have selected. So select the two, right click, select these two, right click, places that beam in there. And I can go down this line here, add the final row, and we're all set. So now we got the beams in place. Obviously, we want to cope these around some of these members. So if we go ahead and select this cope icon in the modify panel, you get three options. You got select, beams, and columns. First thing we'll look at is the select option. So now it's going to ask me to select the members that I want to cope. So I'm going to, I want to cope these two beams at the columns. So once I select those members, I right click and it's going to ask me to select the coping boundaries. Go ahead and select that column and right click. It's going to give me the option. Since I have bolted and welded checked, I can choose which one I want. I'm going to go ahead and select bolted. Trims my beams around that column. Now some of the other options we want for coping is beams. So now what I do is I can go in here and I can window this entire model, right click, Choose my option for bolted, and it copes each of the beams at, at the column for every intersection that I have. Go ahead and rotate here so we can see it a little better. There we go. So now let's go ahead and get into the setup, and we'll, we'll, we'll play with some of these rules now. We'll go ahead and check this auto cope box. So now when I, when I place any new members, it's going to automatically cope. So if I have both welded and bolted options showing up, I'm going to get that menu that's going to say, do you want bolted or welded? Since I want bolted, I know I want bolted. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck welded for now. I'm going to hit apply and close. So now we'll go ahead and look at the secondary framing option. So when I hit insert, what it's asking you to do is select beam pairs. So if I want to place a beam in between these two members, I want to select those two and then right click. Now that brings up the secondary framing panel. Um, it'll show you the pairs. We only had one pair selected, so you only see one in that list, the overall beam length. The distance to origin option, which if I want to uh, key in a dimension from the origin point of this arrow, I can key that in there and add the point. But we want to use go ahead number of members. I'm going to leave this set to one and I'm going to add points. So what this will do is it's going to place a member. It's going to evenly space that member along that beam. So once I got those points added, I'm going to hit, hit done. Places my beam in place, already coped and ready to go. Go ahead and do the same thing with secondary framing. Except we want to place a couple beams in between these members and these members. Same thing, we just want one member. So we'll go ahead and check that box, add the points. You can see now we got two pairs in here. So pair one highlights shows you that origin point. Go ahead and switch that to pair two. I'm going to show you the new pair that's highlighted with the origin point. Go ahead and add that point there and hit done. Both beams added, already coped and ready. Now we can do it multiple times. So if we go ahead and insert here, we can select multiple pairs. So what we can do is select those three beams. And I want to place two members in between each of these pairs. So I want to go and I'm going to go ahead and check that box and hit two for add points. Now I got my two points added. Switch to pair two, add those points to pair two and hit done. All four beams in, ready to go really quick. Now this time we want to place a catwalk across the top panel of this uh, structure. So we'll go ahead and hit insert again, but this time I want to select all of these parallel members across the top. Right click, okay. So now we got a full list of beam pairs in here. But this time we want to use the distance from origin. So here's my origin point. I want to place a beam that's four foot six from the end of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and key in four and a half feet and add points. Now we want to go ahead and select all of our pairs, and I want to add points to that as well. Get on to pair three, and I'll select pair four, add those points. Now I want another one that's, I want it to be three foot six from this point, but I can't just key in three foot six because it's going to come from the origin point. So I need to key in eight feet, and I'll add that point as well. Go ahead and do, do this for the rest of the pairs as well. And then hit done. Now we got our beams placed in there really quick and easy. Now one of the other options for modifications is the grips that uh, Amy was talking about earlier. 
One thing you should mention, we have that plus grip in the middle. I can go ahead and select this plus grip, and if I want, I want to change that member size, I can do that. We don't want to do that for right now, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the other options with these grips. So if I select this, if I select the plus grip on the end, I can key in that delta distance. So if I have a 20 foot column and I want to make it 20 foot six, I can key in six inches here. If you select the grip at the, the square grip at the end, this will be the overall distance. So if I, same thing, if I have a 20 foot beam and I want to make it 26 feet, I can just key in 26 feet. Or you could easily just use your snaps to adjust the size of the member with the other beams. They're all set. And once those are in place, we want to place some base plates on these columns. So I'll go ahead and select the plates icon up here in the model panel. I want to use the base plates, and we can go ahead and set this member thickness to three quarters of an inch. Set our groups to plates. And we can just key in a dimension for the length and the width. I'm keying 16 here. And we have some a couple insert options. We've got pick points and select columns. So I can do pick point and like I can just pick each point on the end of the column, or I can do the select columns. So when I hit insert, I can go in here and just window the entire model. It's going to look for those vertical members as the columns. I right click, and the next thing it's going to do is actually to pick a thickness direction. So the negative direction is going to be in the negative Z in the model, so that'd be placing the plate below the column. But we want this to go in the positive direction from the ground up, so it would actually trim that column length. So we'll go ahead and select positive. And all of our base plates are placed in place in the model. Let's go ahead and place some bracing. Go ahead and select the bracing icon up here in the, in the model panel. We're going to use the X bracing on this one. We've got our same thing with the shapes belt. We've got the different types of members that we can use. We want to use the T shapes for this one. We'll select our WT 3 by 6 pick the center point. We'll go ahead and set our layer here, groups and layer. Then we'll hit insert. Now what it's going to do is actually select that top member. So if I want to place an X bracing in this panel here, I can just go ahead and select this top member, and my bracing is in place. Since I have my auto cope on it, I already coped that member. A lot of times your bracing isn't always going to go to the cardinal point of your beam, so you need to modify the work point. So up in the modify panel, we get this bracing work point offset. So if I go ahead and select that, it's going to ask you to key in the dimension that you want to offset it. So if I key in five inches since it's a W10, hit enter, and I can specify the end point of the bracing. So if I snap to the end of this beam, or the, the bracing gets shifted down the five inches that we keyed in. We'll go ahead and do that. Same on the other side. Or if you know both members got to be do it, you can key in B for both and select the other member, and it shifts it all down for you as well. Now, we also talked about some of the rules. So if we go back in the setup and we look at this bracing rule, we can go ahead and check this box for the auto bracing work point offset. So what that'll do is when I place bracing, it'll automatically offset it half the, half the depth of the beam not to exceed a certain dimension keyed into the max work point offset. So the most offset I'll get out of my members is one foot based on my settings here. I'm going to apply and close on that. We'll go ahead and hit, hit insert again, and I'll select this top member. You can see my bracing's already offset. It has a code kick, so I'm still in the middle of the command, so we'll place a couple more things of bracing in here. Right click, and there's our bracing already offset, already coped, and ready to go. I got most of our members placed. Let's go ahead and look at some of the assemblies. So if I click on the assembly icon up here in the model panel, let's look at the handrail. Out of the box, we deliver templates so the, the users can kind of get an idea, but these can be completely customizable to meet your project needs. We use a three foot six handrail on this one, and this time we want to use the points options. So I'll go ahead and hit insert. I want to select the members that are up at the top of this catwalk so you can place handrail around so that we can place it. Once we got our points selected, I'll right click and my handrail is in place and ready to go. Now we also want to place some handrail around this lower platform here, but we know that if we place handrail here, it's going to interfere with these columns. So we have these options for start and end offsets. So I'm going to go ahead and key in a dimension here for the start and end offsets. This time I want to use my place by option sets of members. I'm going to hit insert. So now it's going to ask me to select the member. So I want to place it in between these columns here along this member. Go ahead and select that member and right click. My handrail is in place. At start and end offsets are inside that eight inches, so it doesn't interfere with the columns. Go ahead and insert again, and we'll place it around the rest of the platform, on these three members. Right click, and there's our handrail. Once again, offset so it doesn't interfere with our column. Now we've got the handrail in place. We'll go back to the assemblies palette up here. Go ahead and place a ladder. You know, out of the box, we'll see that we deliver some templates, and these can be changed. We want to go ahead and set the ladder with cage. This time we want to do the place by option with points. We'll hit insert. We're going to place a ladder with the cage on this end of the, the structure over here, from the top of the beam down to the ground level. Take my two points, my ladder with the cage is placed in the model and ready to go. So this time we want to place another ladder over here, but from the top of the platform to this lower platform. So go ahead and select our ladder because we don't need a cage, it's not that long. 
Uh, we want to change the rotation because obviously it's on this side of the structure, so we'll set that to 180. This time we'll use the members options. So when I hit insert, I'll go ahead and select this top member here and ask you to endpoint the direction. This is going to be the direction of where you want that or the insertion point of that ladder. So we go ahead and select this midpoint of this beam. And as you select the second member, that's going to be the member to specify the height. Select that, ladder's in place and ready to go. Let's go back and we want to place a stair. We want to place a stair from this platform down to the ground level. So we'll go into the assemblies, select our stair icon. Got all these fields are set. Like I said, these can be changed as well, customized to what you need. Go ahead and hit insert for the member height direction option. We'll select this member. It's going to ask you to specify insertion points, same thing as the ladder. You just want that 12 inches in from the end of the column. So there's a new insertion point 12 inches in from this column. It's going to ask you to specify a point to define the height. So we want this to go to ground level, so I know my grid's at the ground level, so I can just snap to that point. I'll point that in the direction I want the stairs to go. I want that to come away from the platform, so I just point in this direction and click. There's our stair in place. Now, we don't have any handrail on this. We could have done this at first, but I want to show you that some of the easy modifications that can be made. So I'll go ahead and double click on this, and that's going to bring it into the modify stair palette. Scroll down a little bit. We have this checkbox for auto handrail. So I'm going to go ahead and check that box. I'm going to use the 2 foot 10 inch stair handrail. I'll hit apply. Throws my handrail on the stairs and ready to go just that quick. So now we know we got, you know, we got handrail up at the top. We got our, our stairs up here, but we, we got to be able to cut this open. So to modify uh, option, we have this open handrail. So I'll go ahead and select that icon. It's going to ask you to select the handrail. So I want to open up this handrail. Then I'll ask you to specify a start and end points where you want that to open and to, end, to start and end. So I'll select this point here and over here. And it opens my handrail for me. Go ahead and do the same to these uh, to the tops of the ladders up here. Take that handrail, my start and end point, opens my handrail. Same thing over here. Handrail, start, end point, opens my handrail for me. So now we got that all set. And let's go and place some grading on this catwalk up here and on this platform. So we'll go back into the assemblies palette and we'll pick our grading option. The grading option, we're going to have this, we're going to have this show detail grading check to show you the differences. So I'll go ahead and select my grading grouping. And we're going to set this place by the members and we'll hit insert. So I'll go ahead and select these members along the middle of this catwalk. Place my grading on. Get all these selected here and then right click. And it places a slab here because it's not detailed. So if we go ahead and switch this to a rendered view here. You'll see that it's a transparent slab that's in place. Now also, too, when, it, when you place it by members or points, whatever points you select, it's going to place it at the middle of the beam. So if you go ahead and double click on this, we have this boundary offset in here. If you know what that boundary offset is, you can go ahead and key in a dimension in there, hit apply, and it'll shift that to the outside of that member for you. Now let's go ahead and place some grading on, this on the lower platform, but this time we'll go ahead and check that box. Set our option to members again and hit insert. And we'll select this member and this member, and we'll right click. And our detailed grading is shown in the model. Now, the grading is going to interfere with the column, but we do have some tools that can help with that. So, in the modify panel, we have this grading decking open. Go ahead and select our grading. It's going to ask you to select the object that you want to open around the grading. So, we'll go ahead and select our columns over here, right click, and then it'll key in an offset distance. Now, this offset distance is the distance from the object to the grading. So, we'll go ahead and just key in two in there and hit enter. And it throws in, throws that openings around the grading, give you secondary banding. Uh, this will this will work really well if you have pipes referenced in. Your pipe comes through the grading, you can select that pipe, and it'll open up that model, or open up the grading for you. And ready to go. And that'll do it for our demo.